Hello and welcome to the show. My name's Relevant and this is Do All The Things. On today's episode, I'm going to be building a solid state 12AX7 substitute using these little LND150 MOSFETs. So this story all starts when I was looking up some of the new amp designs that were out, specifically the JTM-1. And I noticed in this design, they substituted the cathode follower with this strange LND-150, and I could recognize a MOSFET symbol. So sure enough, uh, when I was placing an order with Mauser, I saw if they had them. They did, and I ordered a few of them. And sure enough, in a previous episode, you saw, I just, you just jam them in the tube sockets and they work. They don't necessarily sound good, but they actually can sound good. It depends how you use them. Strategically, uh, in my JCM 800, it could, in one position, give me a, a fuzz pedal effect, or in another position, I could get that jubilee sounding diode clipping. But in fact, I've been enjoying them in my JCM 800 in the phase inverter position. You see, I'm all preamp distortion with an overdrive pedal, and I find in the preamp position, the sound of my JCM is a little bit cleaner and tighter. Now, in my Jet City, another amp I've been playing with them a lot in, I didn't like them in the phase inverter position, but in fact, I did like them in the effects loop buffer position. That's that's the fourth tube, is just recovery for the effects loop and then, you know, the cathode driver for the EQ. That's one problem with the Jet City Soldano design. It has a lot of tubes in it, so that's more that you have to hand pick and figure out what sounds good and it adds more EQing and possibly imperfection if you don't find the right tube or perfection if you do. But in this case, for that particular application, a good transparent buffer is all you need. So I'm gonna be permanizing this mod today in some way, shape or form, making a substitute tube that I can just pop in there and give or go. And to do that, I have acquired some of these socket savers. Now these things, they don't do anything. They're simply some sort of socket extension, socket adapter. You would put them in the socket of your tube amp and theoretically, if you were switching out tubes often, I guess tone testing, it would prevent you from wearing out your socket. Or at least that's what I would imagine. Maybe in some applications, you would take a beloved special tube, put it in there, and then you know, you're not worried about your socket, but you don't want to risk damaging the pins of your special tube. Either way, they cost a little bit more than I would expect. And the only way to get them economically economically feasibly is direct from China. So it took a while to get in and I regret not buying more of them, but I'm figuring this will make a good platform to install these things into permanently. And then boom, I have a substitute, which I think might be a trademark term. So taking one of these apart, I found inside exactly what I expected. It's basically a tube socket and it has pins soldered to the bottom of it. So I'm gonna have to be careful. I don't lose those pins in this modification. Now, ideally, what I would like to do is install them inside the assembly. It's just a question of if I can still get a screw through. I'll talk more about the screw later, but yeah, it looks like it'll be fine. So I made this, uh, I call it a gauge, just quickly labeling the tube sockets so that we know which positions we can put them in. Now we have a little bit of headroom here. You see where it maxes out, there's, there's maybe an eighth inch space, a few millimeters right in there to work with in which we can solder to. These guys, basically, if you're looking at the socket, it's round face out, flat face in, just like that. Couldn't be more straightforward. Just literally jam them in pin one, two, three, and six, seven, eight on the other side. So let's see if I can fit the, oh, that's backwards. So let's see if I can fit those in there. You know, it honestly seems like a pretty straightforward process as long as we don't mess up what pins go where. You gotta kinda get one of these to shit right in right where about I would need it there. But this is where things get surgical. Like I ideally want them to be inside. It would be so super easy to just stick them in those pin holes and solder them that way. But I wanna have them inside so that they're protected. And I'm protected from potential high voltages. Oh. Just twist those around, eh? Okay, this seems like it's going pretty straightforward so far. Need to get the tweezies to maybe get this last one in there. Wrap them for good tone, bud. I'm worried any moment I'm gonna snap the legs off the bottom of the transistor. That's so far so good. I'm just worried about relief. 
I want to push these down a bit so that, you know, heating is going into a tube amp after all. And even though they themselves might not get very hot. Okay, I think that'll be good like that. You can even see it's so small. I don't think my camera zooms in any more than that. Let's see if I can't get them soldered to place. Uh, let's double check here. Look at the gauge. Make sure, yes, one, two, three. Oriented the correct way. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh. I almost feel like these are worth making and selling on eBay. Now that I've released a video about it, someone's gonna go and do it. No one's gonna believe me that these things can actually sound good in an amp. That's the real problem. It is treacherous to do something like this. <gasps> Solid state. Well, let's see if the pupper will still go on over top. Oh, my pins are a little bent out of shape now though. Um, uh-oh. Okay, we will have to plan differently. The next one, assuming I can get this one together. Okay, mostly harmless. I feel like, ooh, the base inside is thicker than I expected, so I'm bottoming out. But it appears that only one of them's problematic. This one here, if I push down on this one. Okay. Damn, she ain't sitting nice. Okay, this is where things are gonna start to get tricky. I thought I had more room, but I do not. These things need to push down ever so more. It looks like they are going though. That looks better. Ah, yes, that feels right now. It's mating up the way it should. All right, now we have to do the same thing on the other side. Six, seven, eight. Let's try to get them as low as possible this time. Well, she's tight, bud. And in fact, they might be somewhat... We gotta watch out we clear this little hole that's in here. It's very important we do not block that hole. Alright, that looks good. Let's see if we can't tack them on. Oh. Okay. Oh, that... Solder was still cold. I'm gonna have to touch it up. Ah, will it fit? Will it fit still, sir? Yes, it will. All right. Do you see the arrangement we're going for? Look at that. They're just in there now, permanently, forever. And our hole's gotten smaller, so we have to be mindful of the hardware we're gonna use because we have two other problems that could be solved with one solution. You see, if we just go ahead and, you know, chucker this into a tube socket right now, we're gonna have a bad day. You know, you're gonna have a heck of a time gripping on it to pull it back out, especially if you have a tube shield or a, a deep hole because you have one of those PCB mounted sockets. Hell, just getting this out of here is tricky. You seem to have snapped it into place by accident. We need to establish something of a puller. So we need some hardware. Now these guys are normally fastened together sandwiched with a little nut and a little bolt. Now this, oh, mostly clears the LNDs. If our screw was any bigger, it wouldn't fit because this hole here, a 632 will fit into. Uh, this one, not so much. This is a 440 screw. The number four, and I guess that would be 40 pitch. Uh, we have to thread it between those MOSFETs. Uh, I have a little nut for it. We'll get that little nut in there. Now finding hardware of this size is tricky. Usually once you get a bolt this long, it's in a larger size. In fact, my local hardware store didn't have 440 this long. You might be able to get a 632 to work, but it feels tight now that I have those transistors in place. Fasten that down now, all the way. Oh, she's just spinning. I should have got little lock nuts. I didn't feel that I was gonna need them though. All right. Now we got it tight, we have something pretty much to grab onto. I just want to better officiate this. So what do I got here? What do I got here for hardware? These are tension pins, roll pins. Ha, 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 that'll do. They're kind of icky metal, so I will do something else. I might be low on five mil heat shrink. But that's the general plan here now. Ugh, cut a bit too much. Those threads on too now because the heat shrink tolerance. The heat shrink tolerance. Now in theaters. Just trying to cut off some of the slack here, bud. 
And finally, I found some 440 brass nuts. So now we have something to grip onto, right? This is gonna allow us to, uh-oh, damn it. Let's put an actual socket in there. There we go. Oh, there we go. See, you'd have a hard time gripping that. But now we have a nice puller. Puller, pusher, grip. The other problem it solves is uh, you won't mistake this for a socket saver anymore and stick a tube in there. You might have a bad day. The only other thing I might want to consider doing is uh, filling these holes with maybe some glue or something, just to say. Because, yeah, you could probably electrocute yourself if you're grabbing this. Stick your fingers down in there. There's still a little bit of latent voltage in the circuit because you're hot plugging your tubes. We're lucky these fit inside. Yeah. She'll be good. What can I do about top insulation, though? A little bit of adhesive surface prep. Hey! Uh, just, uh, some of this rubberized electrical tape here. I don't feel like gluing. I don't like gluing, sir. Oh, this'll do just fine. All right. We have some rubber now. Kind of clogging up the works, though. Let's get this screw back into place. I have a specialty wrench for jobs like this. Ho, 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 uh, uh. There we go. Complete rubber holder. It looks funny. It looks like something out of Russia, but it's gonna do. I suppose I should test it for you now. Okay, I'll go get an amp pad. Entree Marshal du Fromage. A spinner around by. Get her some power bud. Get her some speaker bud. Ah, a little bit of odd. Can't play this guitar amp without OD, right? Yes, I think so, sir. Let's get them heaters glowing. And uh, sure enough, the idea now, if we did everything right, we just uh, pop this in there like that. <laughs> yeah, that looks great. And if we turn her on, she should work. I can get the point. I didn't uh, mic the cab and that workshop beater cab there sounds like ass anyways. It's just good enough to make sure things are working. So you're not gonna hear the tonal nuances. That's not the point here. The point here is that it works. <laughs> we have a solid state phase inverter. I like the way it sounds with this amp. And now I can easily hop that around to different positions and see what happens. Just uh, put on some standby there. Uh, uh, uh. Oh yeah, just um, wait. What's going on here? Get to your socket. Pins are mostly good. Hey, none of that. Yeah, see, now the amp doesn't sound as good. Got some diode tripping. Yeah, definitely a good idea having something to grab onto. And that's that. Hey, my 
eyes are down here, bud. So, you know, now we just make another one out of the second socket saver. I, I think, yes, I definitely want two and I have hardware provisions for two. So yeah, not gonna do that in this video though. <laughs> You've seen the gist of it. We're done here now. And I hope you'd enjoy this. You can make solid state substitute 12AX7s with a socket saver, some hardware store hardware, and a couple LND 150 MOSFETs that are all 50 to 70 cents each. That's all in all less than the price of a replacement tube and it can have some very good tonal applications, but not fully. So it's just fun. Yeah, my outros are always so awkward. Wait, it's been 20 seconds yet. It's always like a 20 second thing. Her, 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 her. Uh, yeah.